I went ahead and dove off the edge. <laughs> I've been scraping this thing. That first time I touched it with the scraper, having never scraped a machine tool, oh, dude. <laughs> a little nervous there. But, you know, once you get into it, it's just a chunk of metal. It's just if you screw it up, you're out of, well, you could be out a lot of money. Already blued up another time here. And the part does hinge. It hinges well, actually. And... We're right about here, I'd say. And we're about here. We're, we're making contact on all of our points. I still have not scraped at all right here here uh i just took a my very first pass on this section so we're almost we're almost there i again i kind of ignore this print and i take a second one just to verify that my bluing is consistent See what I mean? The uh, that second print is more revealing of what the actual highs are. That first print seems to always just dive down in the valleys. It's just too thick. That's just the bottom line. The ink is too thick. So we've got solid contact there. That's that's awesome. I still have a little hole here, about the size of a quarter. And I got this, which is probably, uh, I'd say, the width of two quarters. Center section here still comes up light, which is okay by me. It, it, this center section actually doesn't have any contact whatsoever with the knee. But I've just been scraping flat and bringing this down. All right, let's do this. All right, we got it uh, rolled over here, rolled the whole column over. That was actually really simple. So we're going to start on our first dovetail. I'm going to go ahead and kind of hog out the bottom. I already started that process, and I just took an old file here, and basically I just turned it into a hook, and I'm coming in here and just pulling that across to kind of dig that down. The reason for that is so that the straight edge does not bottom out. You can probably see that that pile is forming there. We don't want any of that to become an issue. Well, we've been going at this now a couple evenings. It's not a lot of material to take off. It's just the amount of wear that's on this dovetail. Man, it's a lot. So we saw that initial bluing there working our way down got some contact at that lowest point now we'll take a couple readings and uh, see what we get now I don't have 
the mill positioned in a manner, at least I couldn't get it without it wanting to tip over. I don't have it positioned where I can just let go of the uh, straight edge. It'll either fall down into that pocket and give us a false reading, or it'll fall down on the floor. So this was our lowest point right here. Um, not sure how much you're picking that up, but we do have coverage. We have points of contact from the outer edge down into the bottom edge of this dovetail. I may end up taking just a few more passes down here at the end just to break up the big points. Got some big contact down here. Got a couple little areas over in here where it's pretty big uh, contact areas. Like I said, I'll, off camera, I'll probably just break up a couple of these big areas and um, we'll get this thing ready to roll on to the other side. Alright, before we flip it on over to do the opposite side, I thought just for fun, just to see the change, I went ahead and set my half thou indicator up using the jig in just like I made in the previous video or some video back. I know that there will be movement because obviously this side is unfinished, so there's going to be that, that change. With both original uh, dovetails, meaning both sides having wear, I think our uh, lowest point was three and a half thousandths. And roughly in this range right here was that three and a half thousandths. And you can see even when I just press on it a little bit on either side, I don't know if you're getting that, there's some movement. Right here was the largest amount of wear. And there's a thou. I knew it was right in this region. So there's a one thousandth of, a, of an inch. Still one thousandths. So that, that makes sense. And we start to drop back down to zero. I feel really good about my scraping straight down. Here is a first print with zero scraping. We've got a little tiny bit of contact down at the bottom. There are points where it was riding. I'm assuming that outside edge, it was the exact same as uh, the other side, there was basically no wear along that outer edge. So it took a long time to bring that down to the rest of it, which had a bunch of wear. And of course, up here at the top is the best that we've got. So I've got to get this and the little bit that's here to become the plain that drops everything and brings it all into alignment. Great thing about this jig is that it can hang off of here and the indicator is touching the dovetail. Again, we haven't rolled it back so we're still in the vertical position. You may or may not see a, uh, a little bit of flutter on the indicator. You have to realize that I am within two passes, three passes left, and I just want to verify that I'm, I'm okay. So 
it may flutter. kind of hard to do where I got to move the camera and also uh, keep this moving steady. Remember we had two thousands worth of run out and I'm at the edge so I have to stop. I would say that's pretty darn good for never having scraped a dovetail. I'm kind of proud of that. We went from three and a half thousands, three and a half thousands, almost four thousands worth of run out. Awesome. Freaking awesome. So there it is just laying on its back. Uh, we don't want to tip it up yet because we have to get to the knee. And with the knee, We've got it on the surface plate here. We've got it on some one, two, three blocks. That's not ideal, but it is all that I have. And I'm going to take some checks here to verify how much the knee is actually uh, dropping down. So what you're looking at is the knee upside down. Anyway, I'll talk a lot more about that later on. There might be a little bit of a delay because... Well, I just set it down. See ya!